What's going on, everybody? Let me know when you can hear me. Let me know when you can see me. First live stream in quite a while talking about the return, or at least the first example I've seen in a while of a sustainable 10x in the altcoin market. And that means that we're seeing potentially a market bottom. I haven't seen quite the same performance uh, in some time, so it's kind of nice to see these things reemerge as trends. That said, we're going to wait for some people to jump in. What's going on, everybody? Uh, go ahead, smash that like button when you hop in so that other people can see the video. Uh, as always, today, we're doing my first stream, like I said, in a very long time. Great to see everybody in the chat. Yes, how's it going? Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the return of some thousand percent gains on altcoins. What does it mean? Does it mean that the market has bottomed? Does it mean that we're heading up, up only now, uh, from now until eternity? And what it really uh, should be uh, for us traders out here in the audience? Because to be honest, I've learned some lessons on this recent correction. And even if we turn upwards and bullish again, I'm going to be laying out my strategy for how I'm going to approach the next few weeks and months, given everything we've learned about the way these markets are behaving. What's going on, everybody? Lots of emojis in the chat. Shout out to everybody. Thank you for coming out. Happy July 4th weekend to everyone out in America, where I am, everyone in America. Um, also, happy, uh, happy birthday to my brother and my dad, uh, who had their birthdays this weekend, and uh, any other birthday boys out there or girls in the audience. Today, we're going to be talking about something I think is really important, which is we're seeing some really interesting uh, movements in the markets. We're seeing some altcoins heat up. We're seeing uh, different sectors being resilient to the crash. And we're also seeing some wild, wild action in NFT land. The biggest question, of course, being are we at the bottom and is it time to start aping into positions? Uh, we're going to take you through a few of the different things to consider and what I'm looking at, essentially how I'm sizing up the market. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Uh, bullish, bullish indeed. Um, obviously, I've been on wait and see mode. Uh, for people who just jump in, they see the title and they make a comment. Obviously, my whole thesis and how I view the market isn't just a, you know, a thumbnail. So please watch the video and we'll lay out exactly how I'm viewing things right now. Um, it's not so simple as only up or only down. Uh, like I said, we've been on wait and see mode, conserving with my biggest positions for a while now because these crab markets tend to really hurt uh, super low cap projects. And just like uh, in the bullish markets, those super low caps or those uh, juicy gems go insanely, insanely high. They give you, you know, storybook gains. They also give you storybook losses uh, when the market turns. Um, that said, uh, things are actually looking, you know, pretty okay here in the mid 30s. I thought we were going to go plunge down uh, even further the last couple of days. Ethereum, obviously, and its strength being one of the biggest narratives in the entire space. Um, but what we're going to look out here is that, you know, according to uh, sentiment, kicking off July, Ethereum holders are now making history here. Uh, with the lowest percentage of Ethereum on exchanges since November 2018, which is, of course, you know, literally the bottom of the market uh, since the 2017 top. You know, those were probably the juiciest gains on almost any coins. And so this is an absolute, absolute huge piece of data, as we know that as coins leave exchanges, it tends to be bullish for price. We also see unprecedented activity going on uh, with Ethereum's ETH 2.0 staking contract. Uh, a lot of really interesting stuff going on. So it's important, just like I said, to, to really be hyper-focused on the space, even during these bearish movements, even during these corrections, uh, and potentially even if we are at the beginning of a bear market, it's important to realize that those who stick around and those who keep uh, persisting in their dedication to the space will be the ones that end up buying in at the lows, buying in at the bloodiest part of the bear markets, and probably you know forever impacting their financial futures when the market does turn bullish again. Um, someone's super chatting saying, is FWT Albert still okay to keep in your wallet? I know you had this in your wallet. Um, I did, uh, like I said, on the lower cap coins, take a little bit of profits. Um, I still have a significant amount of FWT from um, my investment that I still have in my wallet, but I did take some off the table, just like I did with a lot of projects. Um, that's not a knock on, on Albit. They have a fantastic project. I'm a very big fan of theirs. Um, just was trying to preserve capital in these crazy times. And like I said, I'm going to start reallocating to these projects that are delivering. And Albit's a great project, a uh, great example of a project that has been delivering and shipping great uh, uh, great updates. Now, that said, 
Um, I think this is a really, really major uh, piece of data to understand that Ethereum's total circulating or active, you know, uh, de facto circulating supply that's off of exchanges is one of the most advantageous things about this project right now, as well as we have uh, the ETH London hard fork, which is, of course, the much awaited hard fork where ETH starts burning Ethereum as part of its protocol. That is something that I I really think is hard to price in. It's almost hard to anticipate the magnitude of this change. It's kind of like when people ask if the halvings are priced in, but there's no possible way that you could price in a base fee burn for Ethereum. There's absolutely no way. Um, if you guys are excited for ETH2, if you guys are excited for this base fee burning mechanism in EIP-1559, uh, for those of you guys who don't know what that is, essentially Ethereum's upgrading their protocol, big upgrade, one of the most important upgrades it's ever done, and they're going to implement a transaction fee that will actually just get burned. So instead of uh, this fee going to miners, the fee will just get burned. And so less Ethereum exists each and every transaction. And this is just a magnificent change for Ethereum. So one of the criticisms of Ethereum is that they constantly inflate the supply. There's no hard cap supply on Ethereum like there is for Bitcoin, they have an inflationary mechanism. And so people obviously prefer Bitcoin when it comes to tokenomics because you know you know how many there will always be. Now Ethereum implementing this burn could actually make it go and diminish and become deflationary, um, which is even I think one better than uh, Bitcoin, which is obviously non-inflationary, but becoming deflationary is, is quite interesting. So if you guys like that, go ahead, smash the like button. Again, uh, this is my first live stream in quite some time. I'm really excited about it. i um, been super, super busy uh, with all the projects I have going on in the space, um, but I'm gonna be kicking up the content really, really hard over the next few days and weeks because I'm so excited about what comes next. And I also love these moments. Um, there's there's a part of me that actually gets more excited during these bearish pullbacks uh, than I was during the mania phase because the mania phase really brought with it a bunch of tourists, a bunch of people who were you know cash grabbing and doing other things. They don't have a long term dedication to the space. Uh, they just saw a a money making opportunity. Whereas the people who stick around when things get hard, those are the people who actually genu uh, generally, at least on you know, the law of big numbers, have the intention to bring you know, good, long-lasting um, contributions to the space. So that's where I think we're going to really see these improvements is through moments like these. And that's why I do get excited because it gets harder doing moments like these and people who are used to be it being completely easy tend to drop away. So it's a great moment, I think, for the space. And we have this amazing growth of Ethereum uh, happening in tandem with a bit of a reset from the markets. Now I did, before I get into this uh, news about you know JP Morgan analysts and how they're all of a sudden bullish on Ethereum, which is obviously a fantastic, uh, fantastic realization that Ethereum, specifically staking on Ethereum, is going to be a massive industry. It's funny, right? We've been knowing about staking, uh, staking coins, different proof of stake, uh, you know, inflationary benefits for years now, and we now have JP Morgan trying to talk about this as if it's the you know the news, <laughs> something that's actually new. This is one of the oldest things, I guess you could argue uh, in crypto is staking, uh, definitely not revolutionary by any means. Um, but you can see how far behind these banks are. You can see how completely behind the eight ball they are and just how, how this community is years and years ahead of traditional finance. Regardless, we have here uh, the analysts saying that they're going against uh, uh, Jamie Dimon. Uh, saying that they argue that blockchains are running more efficiently and that they will grow in popularity versus Bitcoin. We know about the energy FUD, which is, you know, I think being worked out in part due to this uh, China miner uh, exodus. However, staking already generates $9 billion. It's estimated that a $40 billion industry will exist by 2025. That's a huge growth. Um, but I believe it, right? I believe that. What I think is even more to the point here, and I really like this uh, thread here by Alex Mashinsky. If you guys don't know Alex Mashinsky, he is uh, the the creator, the founder of Celsius, uh, one of the biggest, most impactful uh, DeFi projects out there. I guess it's CeFi. Uh, but he says, we've seen two capitulation selling events for Bitcoin in the last two months. Retail FOMO brought it up to 65. Uh, flash selling last week of about $3 billion that included Mina and China retail, some FUD selling, and he says we're about to see the third and last wave of sell-offs here. So if you guys are excited for a final wave of sell-offs, let me see you smash that like button. I know I personally couldn't be more excited to see a final wave of sell-offs because I honestly made some of my biggest uh, moves and gains in September. Now, it was super fun being in this uh, mania wave that was July and August. That was like seeing crypto come back to life. But then September, the crash, you saw so many projects with amazing fundamentals 
at completely rock bottom, devastating valuations. That's where I made a ton, a ton of great moves. And those paid off like crazy in December and January. Now, if we see this, um, and this would be the bottom, this would be a fantastic thing to play out. Number three, we were about to get one more wave of selling, mostly the FOMO $20 billion worth of GBTC arbitra uh, arbitrage institutional trade. Hedge funds used leverage loans from Genesis Trading and others to buy Bitcoin in January, February 2021. That will become unlocked for the first time starting next week. At least $5 billion will be unwound off GBTC, uh, and this may take a while uh, and take us down to the $29,000 levels. Uh, and then after that, he thinks we go onward and upwards past all-time highs to $140,000 to $160,000 per BTC. Now, that would be a fantastic uh, outcome. I personally would be super excited about that. I think after this collapse, this correction, I think if we're talking about the 2021 cycle, um, the 2022 cycle, my vision for how high it could get uh, has definitely been reduced by this particular setback. Um, but, you know, there's a few different ways to view where we're at. But I think this 140 to 160, regardless, would see some massive gains uh, in altcoins, DeFi, and NFTs for sure. You'd see a lot of coins get back to all-time highs and then do multiples above them. And there are so many projects that are needing to go 510x to get back to all-time high that it's pretty believable that if you just ride these projects back to all-time high, if we are back in this bullish posturing, which I'm not fully convinced of yet, uh, that you do really, really well. Um, again, alts will get crushed if we don't end up uh, really returning to a bull market. If this is crypto winter, alts will still leave you crushed, which is why I haven't made any big moves yet. I'm still on wait and see. Uh, but this is a nice view of the markets, a nice view of what could come next. If you guys are excited by it, go ahead, show some love, throw a like button, throw that blue thumbs up onto this video. I really appreciate it. Okay. So this was a nice little piece of information as well. And by the way, we're going to get to the 10X coin. The 10X coin was actually made, uh, uh, I was made aware by Mr. Business Intelligence, uh, Mr. Biz. You guys know him. Uh, he's from Twitter. Definitely check him out. He pointed this out to me and I wanted to use it as a case study uh, because I think, you know, I have a rule that the bear market was going to start if Bitcoin takes more than a 50% correction. That happened. I didn't listen. I could have gotten, I uh, could have been a little safer if I had sold the immediate re relief rally with all my coins. However, I also have a rule that when I start seeing coins do 10x, then that is usually indicative of a bullish trend. So we're going to go into that at the end here. But I just wanted to point out here that Compound fa uh, Finance has just under $10 billion on its deposits. And the average bank in the United States has $3.1 billion on its balance sheets, which means that, you know, Compound is essentially, you know, more valuable, about three times, uh, has about three times the amounts of assets on its books than the average bank in the United States. Um, I also thought this was pretty interesting because we had, uh, where was this? Um, yeah, so this uh, representative uh, here in Wyoming, conservative Republican U.S. Senator, all Wyoming, and this senator from Wyoming is saying, hey, look, if you're in the Bitcoin mining space, please reach out. We want you in Wyoming. So again, we see how you know one opportunity uh, to be set up in China is now being replaced by the opportunity to set up in the United States, in Wyoming specifically. Uh, and as people are you know worried that they might get driven out of New York, you're seeing an opportunity open up uh, in a different state. So it's pretty interesting to see the ebb and flow of these different uh, forces on Bitcoin mining. But one thing that I believe strongly, and what's evidenced by posts like this, is that one you know one person's trash is another person's treasure just like crypto or bitcoin mining trading any kind of aspect of this industry might get some kind of pressure put on it by one nation that opens up the opportunity for another nation to step in whether that's the united states or what we've always sort of thought which is that you know the other sort of lesser uh, uh less less rich nations nations that need more economic prosperity would step in and see this as an opportunity um so yeah, that's, that's how I feel about it. I think this is fantastic, fantastic to see. We're also seeing Cardano get picked up by Grayscale. Not a small piece of news. And again, uh, you know, we've seen how absolutely massive the Cardano uh, fan base has grown, how big the movement around Cardano has gotten. Even though we joke about how they still don't have smart contracts, the reality is, is that, you know, the fundamentals are there for ADA. Uh, and if this bull market returns, they'll probably start going crazy as well. Uh, we have Jonathan K saying, how do I feel about picking up some cold stack and global derivative exchange here? Uh, Rex since IDO, but maybe average down. Like I said, the, the coins that I believe have strong fundamentals, especially ones that launched in May, uh, like cold stack and other ones that are part of trending narratives. Uh, if the market picks back up, I would 
I would imagine that those altcoins have some fantastic growth in their future. Um, again, if the market doesn't pick back up, and this is just the beginning of crypto winter here where we sort of seesaw our way down into Goblin Town, then I don't think that those are good buys because those will probably continually get wrecked. That's just the nature of crypto winter is altcoins just continually keep getting destroyed um, and you know everything kind of flocks back to safety, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum, but mostly Bitcoin. And so that's how crypto winter tends to work. The fact that Ethereum is so resilient and the fact that we're seeing potentially some on-chain metrics pointing towards a, a more secure next few weeks and months, well, that could point towards some, some good uh, action for the altcoins. Like I said, we've just seen a 10x in one altcoin, which we'll get to in just a minute here. And we're going to dissect uh, how I think you know, how I think this fits in and if this matters, right? So that's that's what we're going to go over because I believe that the performance of low cap alts, as many of you know, um, I've done a lot of content around low cap alts because I believe that these are sort of the more transformative opportunities. They're also extremely risky. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about risk, a lot about risk management as we go through these next few phases, especially if we turn bullish again. You know, during the mania phase of February, everyone was so excited and we were pumping so hard. No one really wanted to hear about the risk management video about profit taking strategies people were just trying to 100x long and yolo the market um, and now i think it's really important to drill in the strategies uh, for profit taking i know i could have taken profits better i'm sure everybody looks back and thinks the same um, and if only just because you want to buy in uh, at the lows I also think this was uh, something really interesting. You know, there's been a lot of chatter around gaming and NFTs lately. How to how to weave gaming into NFTs? Uh, NFT market has been going crazy, as evidenced by this uh, massive, massive fundraise by Animoca Brands. Uh, Animoca Brands is an investor uh, in two of my companies. A fantastic project. And uh, they've now raised uh, another 50 million on top of their 88.8 .8 million. Uh, so now they brings them to 138.88 million. And this was at a $1 billion pre-money valuation. Uh, this was backed by Coinbase and other, I think Samsung was in on this. It is impossible to overstate how big NFTs are becoming right now and how big this wave of excitement and funding going into that industry is going to be. Uh, keep your eyes on the space. Uh, we also have a mobile a mobile game developer, Bling, that's going to reward uh, users with Bitcoin, Satoshis, I'm guessing, uh, <laughs> for playing the game, um, as well as a lot of attention to the Axie Infinity economy, which has been extremely impressive. So I'm super passionate about gaming and NFTs and, and crypto being essentially uh, Trojan horsed into the world by video games. It's my belief that that is going to be the vehicle. So it's really exciting to see some of these narratives come to life. Um, and of course, a lot of people have been asking about the first game from Super Farm that is coming very soon. We've been playing, t uh, play testing it for the last few months, and it's really getting to a stage where we're about ready uh, to start showing people over the next probably this summer. You're going to start seeing some uh, significant uh, uh, images and trailers, uh, and then we'll have some hard dates come out very soon. So thank you guys for all of the excitement and all the questions I kind of I constantly get about that. We are very excited as well. So let's talk about yes. Let's talk about these Nike ads. Yes, I had to buy shoes recently uh, now that I'm going outside occasionally. Uh, and I want to talk about this, which is AR, AI, right? Irie, right? This was the 10X, right? This was brought to my attention by uh, Mr. Biz. As you can see, it went from about 0.2 cents to, you know, 2 cents or so, maybe a little over 10X here. Um, and the question is, like, you know, is this, is this the thing that can make me consider uh, a bullish market again, because I did say if I start seeing 10 X's, um, that it would be a sign. It would be a sign that this market had once again returned to a bullish posturing. And I, you know, like I said, if I would have followed my 50% retracement rule um, and sold the relief rally there, I would have sold in, you know, the 40s. Uh, and that would have allowed me the time to wait and see with a little bit more capital. Um, that rule, I, you know, I wish I would have stuck a little closer to it, even if we're going back up again. And so, my other rule was that if I start seeing 10 X's, I usually only exclusively see those in the bull market. So I need to analyze this and say, how does this fit into my thesis of the market? And does a coin like this matter, you know, with trading volumes at its peak of, you know, $2 million? And the reality is, is that this is cool to see, um, though, unfortunately, this isn't a coin that has just been on the market. This is a brand new coin. Brand new coins can go through hype cycles, as we all know, at the beginning. Um, and, you know, a 10x on a brand new coin, even though this wasn't like an IDO explosion, um, it still, to me, doesn't fit every characteristic that I'd like to see to say, all right, well, now the market's feeling really bullish. 
Um, I think this is really interesting. It's an NFT coin. Um, however, I don't think that there's enough volume and I think it's too low of a market cap to really consider this one. However, it is amazing to see uh, even <laughs> any coins going 10x. Um, and it does feel like this is a, a not too crazy of a chart. This isn't just a gigantic single candle up 10x. Um, it does have a slow grind over several days. Uh, so that is a nicer, healthier kind of growth. But at the same time, the volumes are just so low here uh, that it's hard to take this one um, as proof that we're in any kind of, you know, I guess, empirically, objectively bullish market. Um, but that's kind of how I'm seeing it is, you know, is the market back? I still am rubbing my chin with a big hmm saying, I don't think so. We're not, we, this isn't enough evidence yet, but it is very much so an interesting time to be sizing up entries. I see people throwing out uh, tickers left, right, and center. Uh, we have BMI um, that we're talking about, uh, all, lots of coins that I I believe in long term, and especially if the market comes back, these are coins that I'm going to be going into heavily, right? Um, I actually still have a, a massive BMI uh, position, so I probably won't go in too heavily. I'll just hold on to that one. Um, but other coins um, that I've been looking at, especially DeFi, NFTs, and you know, one of the easiest places to allocate will be these L2s uh, and other L1s, which, as we saw, were just such an easy way to make gains um, and you know, objectively some sort of safer uh, coins because they're higher market cap. Uh, and, and that's what comes with the retail FOMO. So we'll see what comes back here, but I don't think that this AR right chart is enough to say, hey, look, things are bullish again. It's nice to see. Um, but again, I also like that it's an NFT project. Project, getting some hype. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm so, so bullish on NFTs. It's crazy. Um, I don't think this is enough. This is not enough, but it is, it is very nice to see. It's very refreshing to see. Um, we see some coins here uh, coming back. Obviously, we have Titan and Internet Computer. These were kind of memed uh, because of their poor performance, especially ICP. Uh, but again, you know, like the coins that got the hardest rugs, if they're very, very good projects, uh, but the chart just was disastrous because everything was dumping like crazy and risking off in May uh, and early June, then those are going to be prime targets for comebacks. You know, those are going to be the projects that have the chance to just come back to life. Something about you live streaming makes me feel safe. Good to have you back, brother. Hyena Verde, uh, happy to make you feel safe and sound. You are very safu watching the stream. Nothing can happen. That's science. And then finally, I wanted to go over this because, you know, OpenSea, uh, obviously the, the leader, uh, the leading NFT marketplace does a great job with their statistics. And it's something you should be checking out because the actual trading activity on um, different NFT collections has been fantastic of late. If you haven't been checking it out, you know, there's been this, I guess, phenomenon of what we call avatar projects or generative art projects, uh, profile picture projects, whatever you call them. Obviously, the original here is uh, CryptoPunks, where the idea is that, you know, all of these all of these punks have, you know, rarities of their traits, you know, the chance of you getting, you know, any one of these traits uh, has a certain percent rarity. Like if we click into one of these uh, characters, we can see their properties um, and we can see that, you know, they have a 2% chance of getting a police cap, 5% of getting a beard, a shadow beard, 3% of getting the VR, and then 60% of being male. Um, as you can see, uh, what happens though is as you go through these, you know, I've been seeing them, you know, you, you start to become familiar with, you know, the different variations and you start seeing ones that are slightly really unique and it makes you think, wow, this one's really cool. I, I really actually like this one uh, compared to the others. So there's a sort of psychological effect of seeing these avatar projects. And when you start seeing one that's differentiated, differentiated in a way that makes you, you know, I guess, think of your own personality, it's appealing. Uh, the recent one is Bulls on the Block. I think their artist, uh, their artwork on Bulls on the Block was really cool. Uh, but what you guys need to know, what I think you care about, uh, more, than, more than just seeing these random J uh, JPEGs for the non-believers here, is that the performance of these projects has been pretty ridiculous. Um, so as we can see here, let me scroll down a little bit. Um, if we look at... If we look over here, what we see is that, you know, the trading price uh, is is extremely high here. It's going down here for bulls on the block. Um, usually this happens after the, the first few days after minting. Um, but I think these were sold for like 0.08 or something. And their average price is trading here at like 0.4. So if you were managed to get in here on one of these at the beginning, then you're trading, you're, you're immediately, your, uh, your asset has on average gone up, you know, 5x, uh, 6x. And so there's a lot of, 
there's a lot of these coming out. And yes, there are good picks and shovels plays for NFTs. There's many good NFT ecosystems, but it's also worth noting that a lot of people are making just good money flipping these 10,000 uh, these 10,000 item avatar projects, right? Of which there are starting to become many, many, many. And, you know, a lot of them are being successful. It kind of reminds me of IDOs back in uh, February, how most of these IDOs were, were, were blasting off. And that's why people were going so crazy for them because it was like every single one was making money. And that's kind of what's going on with, um, with these avatar projects is a lot of them are making money. And so the NFT scene is heating up. Um, and it's kind of really interesting. I've, I've developed a lot of observations just about NFTs in general. Do I think that all these avatar projects are going to hold and grow in value? Very hard to say. Most likely that 90 plus percent of them are going to lose value. Uh, but for now, for the flippers out there, for people who are looking for a place to speculate, uh, which is a lot of folks in, in crypto land, this is in a space you guys should be following uh, because a lot of these projects are, are having success. Very interesting stuff. Now, of course, uh, this is a an article that I think has quite a bit of hard truths in it, but I like to go over hard truths, which is, you know, this is a, they call this a hype drunk market and calling this like NFTs, the new ICOs, uh, because all of these projects are having so much success. So it's an interesting project. I'm not going to, I'm not going to read through this whole article, um, but they're essentially talking about how this boom in NFT land with these avatar projects is creating so much energy, so much economic activity that it's almost reminiscent of ICOs. Uh, so it's a very, very interesting space right now. And that's why, you know, I'm a big believer in NFTs with utility. I think that's the big wave. Video games, more, you know, uh, unsexy use cases like insurance and, you know, the deed to your house, etc. But I do believe that um, there are going to be a, a really interesting few markets that develop around just collectibles, you know, especially over the last three, four months, um, the resilience of CryptoPunks and Board Ape Yacht Club and these other types of NFT collections has been uh, really fantastic, right? And so um, it's worth understanding what forms these communities, what what forces are powering these communities and why people value them. And we're going to be bringing on some guests, uh, some folks in the NFT community to help articulate what's going on over there, because I think it's one of the most uh, bubbled off, least understood uh, parts of crypto. So I'm going to be bringing that to you guys. Now, finally, before we get out of here, I have here uh, uh, some text. This text was written by the man himself, Eric Crown. Um, I'm going to read it to you. This is his uh, short-term wrap-up on crypto. This is verbatim here. Um, and so he said, you know, pretty bad monthly close, short-term prob back down to 32 to 31, then likely bull trap in the mid 40s, followed by another move back down to mid 30s at best, new lows 20K at worst, will take a long time, bull trap if it happens would be end of this month to mid August, still the best case scenario for the bulls is holding 30K and playing in the range for 30K to 45K for the next four to six months, months in my opinion. Uh, so you guys can make of that what you will. Um, I personally have found Crown to be the voice of reason when it comes to the charts. Uh, I trust him pretty much more than anybody else. Uh, however, you know, no one has a crystal ball. This sounds like a believable scenario. In the end, the, the message here is that holding and going sideways for the next few months is the best possible outcome for the Bulas. Um, and more or less, it's saying that 20K, I've been hearing this, is sort of like the worst case scenario uh, for the bearish situation. So if we start nuking down into the 20s, I'm going to start picking up coins aggressively because I do believe that we'd be starting to reach a market bottom. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys enjoyed this analysis, go ahead, throw uh, a like button on this, smash the like, uh, and it really helps the channel. It really helps this video grow and reach new audiences. Again, guys, my first live in a while. Show some love. I'd appreciate it. Well, anyway. We're going to go ahead and hop in the chat and start answering some questions, your most pressing and important questions. Uh, and I'll see, I'll see what you guys have been thinking about this analysis right now. Yep, we're seeing a lot of NFT coins. I do believe that NFT coins got, you know, completely destroyed, obviously, um, you know, across, across the whole market. And like I've been saying, I'm super, super bullish on that sector. Obviously, I'm building in the NFT sector because I believe in this stuff. I've been talking about it since 2018. Um, and you guys can go back and see all my videos. I'm obsessed with the NFT sector and its ability to commercialize crypto in a way that doesn't feel nerdy, doesn't feel uh, too intimidating. Uh, and that's why I think it's going to be really, really successful. Okay. Do I think NFT tokens have potential to 10x to 100x or did we top out with all of the hype back in February, March? Uh, no, I actually don't think uh, we topped out with all the hype back in February, March. And here's why. 
here, let me see, uh, let me show this to you. Um, yes, here we go. So this is a chart that I published uh, about, here, let me get this down here. Uh, so this chart right here shows you that the NFT sales in June actually outstripped the NFT sales in February on OpenSea. And if there's anything that could show you that the dip has been, in my opinion, uh, I guess we've outlasted the NFT little minty, mini winter here, and we've gone back to NFT mania mode. Now, does that mean that right now we're in another mania mode and that people will be buying the top if they start investing into NFT collectibles? It does feel like valuations are pretty high right now, so keep that in mind. You do want to buy when there's you know blood in the streets, as it were. You want to buy when people are very you know soured on this stuff. Um, so maybe this is, again, buying a, buying a high. But do I think that NFT projects have a chance to make insane comebacks? Of course I do, because the hype has faded, but the actual utility and the usage and the valuations of the underlying assets have started to grow, and, and the actual NFT economy, in my opinion, is healthier now. So I believe that, yes, a lot of the NFT coins have dropped in value, but the underlying has has. In uh, improved and a lot of tech has been delivered. So this is a really, really amazing opportunity, I believe. Um, again, if we go into crypto winter, there's no helping any of these coins. So you need to have that caveat that if we do go into a bitter crypto winter, doesn't matter how amazing the coins are, doesn't matter how amazing uh, the future looks for these projects, the actual token valuations will get dragged down by Bitcoin. Now, if we don't go into crypto winter and we do as Crown hopes we do, which is to go sideways um, for the next few months between 30 and 45K while we rebuild uh, and try for another leg up either at the end of the year or early 2022, in that time, again, we would have L2s. We'd have some more scaling for Ethereum. We'd have Polkadot and Cardano would be uh, either out in the wild or very close to. And that would mean that the entire crypto industry would be able to support the weight of hundreds, uh, you know, I guess hopefully at least tens of millions more people than it could when we had our last run earlier this year. So that would be a very, very positive scenario is if we deliver scaling, at least in some degree, before we go back up again. But what we're seeing here is a very clear evidence to me that NFTs are starting to really blossom uh, as just you know individual assets. Um, and yes, the picks and shovels plays will work very well with this, um, I believe, as the market comes back, because clearly NFTs are not going anywhere. We've seen Binance jump in. We've seen eBay jump in. We're, we're hearing rumors that Instagram is integrating NFTs. Twitter just did their NFTs. Reddit's doing their NFTs. This is big, big stuff. I've been saying it for years, but people will continue to underestimate NFTs. It means nothing nothing to me when people say bad things about NFTs because they'll just be missing the boat. It's fine. NFTs are going to take over. It's it's just as simple as that. They're going to be so, so big. Um, I, I see them as kind of taking over every piece of content um, out there and that's going, or, or other things as well, but content in particular. Um, we'll find a way to use NFTs. Regardless, that's my outlook on NFTs is that we have clear evidence that the market is churning, has even you know started to peak maybe not peak, but has started to make new highs. And that's very, very promising. SpaceX X Doge, thoughts on Eureka? Yeah, uh, Eureka, I met the team. I almost invested in their presale, but I ended up passing. Yes, I do love Superfarm, of course. Any thoughts on Kusama parachain auction, uh, auctions? Kusama token should become scarce over time, getting locked up. Yep, that's been the narrative. Kusama is fantastic. Again, Kusama is one of those coins uh, that, as we go potentially lower, uh, would become even juicier because you know Kusama just its performance over the course of this bull run has been absolutely incredible. Yeah, Eureka is cool. Again, like all this low cap stuff, it doesn't matter how good the projects are. If we go into winter, they're not they're not going to perform. Great to hear you do a live stream, Elio. You're very welcome, Mitch. Uh, happy to do one. Thank you. Um, Elio, do you have an opinion about Zilliqa ecosystem? Not a strong one. Obviously, I'm following the story, following the timeline here, hoping for the best for them, uh, but not a, not a huge opinion here. Yes, I am in Akash Validator. I am very long-term bullish on Akash. I did not sell a single Akash during this dip. I don't plan to. I'm very, very excited for what they have going on. It's just going to be a long-term hold for me because if they do pull this off, I mean, the growth for Akash uh, is, is kind of mind-boggling. What they could achieve could be fantastic. Fantastic. 
What are my thoughts about uh, Ecomi? I think Ecomi is one of the most uh, prolific licensors in the NFT space. I think IP is a very interesting approach for NFTs, definitely one that will have success. But I also am very, very convinced, just like what we saw with video games, that you know the the original IP created for the NFT format will be superior, whether that is created by these big brands with their brands and creating NFT native uh, content um, like avatar projects or stuff like that or different creative uses of the smart contract. That's awesome. Um, but I do think that, you know, just like we saw with the video, the rise of video games, things like Nintendo and Mario and all these other different, uh, you know, what we see with, um, you know, World of Warcraft and Fortnite and what we see with, you know, pretty much all the biggest games of all time. Um, are just original video game IP. They did It wasn't based off, you know, obviously we have GoldenEye 007 on N64, shout out, and all the different crossovers into video game land, uh, Star Wars games. Those typically aren't the most dominant, most iconic pieces of IP. I believe the same thing for NFTs will be true, which is that the native NFT uh IP will end up becoming more dominant, as we've seen with CryptoPunks, Board Ape Yacht Club, stuff like that. That will be the dominant format. But it's really nice to see licenses. That's cool. Um, you know, Animoca is the king of licenses. We see, you know, NBA Top Shot doing licensing of IP. Um, however, that is to me, it it's not going. I believe that those are going to be big, but I believe that the big, you know, the Fortnite level disruption is going to come from uh, from original IP. Who knows? I could be wrong. We'll find out. Either way, I'm long, I'm super long the space. <laughs> Elliot, do you think convergence finance could be the future of DeFi? Um, convergence is really cool. I'm not actually. I would I would want to get a little more updated before I deep dive. Again, guys, I'm not going to be doing too many deep dives on low caps uh, and and altcoins. I am positive. I have a positive sentiment towards convergence. However, in this market, the reality is that you know holding on to uh, low caps uh, is going to be super risky. So just need to hammer that home. It's a risky position to be holding on to a big percentage of your portfolio in low caps. That said, um, it will be the best return on uh, investment if we do end up holding in the 30s and growing from here. But if we nuke down to the 20s, all those low caps are going to get absolutely destroyed and it has nothing to do with how good the project is. You stay throwing backhanded compliments at Ecomi. No, Ecomi, I just said that they are prolific and legendary. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. What about Curate? Yeah, last time I saw Curate had a fantastic product. Um, crown hates alts would rather see downside just despite those who believe in them <laughs> chief bear in panties <laughs> i'll tell him that next time i talk to him no i don't think he uh hates all the alts he's just uh, he's a trader man he trades he's not a long-term investor i i prefer to invest ideologically fearlessly even if things look really bad on the charts I, I invest in things I believe in, um, especially once the market stabilizes. Then I'll invest, you know, aggressively in things I believe in, even if uh, they're not popular. Like NFTs uh, are a great example. I've been, you know, I, I'd like to think I was pretty early on NFTs. There's obviously earlier people than me, but I do believe that this part of this, you know, this is the part of cryptocurrency that you hard. It's hard to teach, which is to think about what's coming next to believe in your convictions and to uh, uh, invest aggressively. That's how I've had my biggest gains. And going with that particular strategy, again, you're not always going to be popular and a lot of traders will probably not, you know, see things the exact same way. That said, I love hearing Crown's insights and I don't look, at, I don't look to him for altcoin uh, analysis. Great job on the channel. Any thoughts on Seller Network? Um, no real thoughts on Seller. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Um, All right, guys. All right, guys. I think we got through a lot of these, a lot of just random altcoin tickers coming up. Uh, like I said, it's really cool. Altcoins are awesome. Uh, however, low cap stuff will get crushed if we nuke lower. And if we do nuke lower and it does seem like uh, we end up in the, the low 20s, I'm going to go in aggressively on Bitcoin, Ethereum, DeFi, and NFT projects. Um, I'll make a list for you guys of the coins that I'm going to aggressively buy. Let me know. Throw, throw a like on this video. Smash that like button if you think uh, that you have some coins that you believe I should be buying during this nuke. Coins that you think have the biggest recovery, the biggest return to glory. Let me know in the comment section below and I'll make sure to include them in my consideration for this list. Again, if you go back and you look at the God tier coins list I made back in November, December, 
a lot of those coins went like a lot of those coins exploded. Um, I will sort of make an adjusted version of that type of video. Um, coins like Rune and coins like Luna and coins that you know have these just amazing ecosystems that I can't see them doing anything other than winning big. Uh, I'll be investing into those if we nuke down lower uh, aggressively, as well as you know the majors and of course Bitcoin and Ethereum. Ethereum being a you know in my opinion one of the most exciting ob uh, opportunities in the world right now. Uh, a 50% discount on one of the most disruptive pieces of technology ever. Uh, so yeah, Ethereum's just, it's such an easy way. <laughs> it's such an easy way to play the market is just to dollar cost average into Ethereum. Um, even, even dollar cost averaging into Ethereum now isn't terrible because even if we go to crypto winter, it probably won't do nearly as bad as the rest of the market. So that's something to consider. That said, I thank you guys so much for watching. You guys absolutely rock. If you guys want to follow me on Twitter at Elio Trades, the link for that is in the description. Uh, and of course, if you guys are looking to make some passive income during this bear market this winter, remember you can get 8.6% interest on BlockFi. I've been doing some yield farming on Anchor Protocol as well as uh, Convex, as well as Yearn. Um, the thing is those fluctuate dramatically. Sometimes my interest rate on Convex and Yearn is actually lower than my interest rate on BlockFi. So BlockFi is just kind of a simple, stupid way to set it and forget it. Um, it's even higher than Coinbase's or Gemini's interest rates. So definitely check that out. As always, if you guys enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Leave a comment if you want to be entered to win the Ledger Nano S. And I will see you very soon on the next video.